What's up guys, Evil D here and I'm back for some more Esperanto slash World of Warcraft lessons. Now, this time, this isn't going to be part of my standard Esperanto World of Warcraft series. For those who don't know, I do a series. Yes, I do a series. This is just going to be focused on one aspect of Esperanto and that's the accusative case. And the reason being is because several people have asked me, especially Duolingo learners, um, if I can somehow clarify it just a little bit more for them. So I figured, you know what, I'll use my gaming and we'll just see what happens okay so first up let's explain what the accusative case is and in totally not layman speech the accusative case is simply just the object of the transitive verb in a sentence now if you're like eh, that's cool i was like that probably about five years ago as well when i first heard about esperanto i'll clarify exactly what each of those words are in a second don't worry you're going to sound super sick after you've learned all these nice fancy new words so first up the standard sentence in any language, okay, but particularly in English, has three parts to it. And those parts are, oh, what is that? No, I don't want that. Those parts are a subject, verb, object. So let's, let's look at an example. So I have a cat, okay? I have a cat. So I is the subject because it is, actually, I won't explain subject just yet. I'll just point out each part. So I is the subject. Havas, oh, sorry. That's English, uh, Esperanto. <laughs> so I have a cat. So have is the verb of the sentence, okay? And cut, uh, cat, oh my god. And cat is the object of the sentence, okay? So I have a cat. So subject, verb, object, okay? You got that down pat? Now, the verb is the doing word, okay? So it basically tells you what's being done to what in a sentence. Now, the cat is the object. The reason being is because it's the thing that's being had. It's the thing that I have. And I am the subject because I'm the thing that has. So the subject is the thing that, that has. The object is the thing that's being had. And the verb is the thing that's have, like doing the have. So. I hope that I didn't confuse the hell out of you, but let's let's just go with that, okay? We'll see how that goes. So, now we know what the three components to a sentence are. In English, the way we dictate this is usually just through word order. So if I say, I have a cat, we know the cat is the thing I have because it comes last in the sentence. We have a subject, verb, object, word order in English. However, if I suddenly then went, um, cat, I have, um, that would sound like a really ba bad cartoon name, but apart from that, it would change the meaning of the sentence because word order in English dictates what we're trying to say. But in Esperanto, that is not the case. Word order doesn't have much like play within this, like the meaning of a sentence. Oh God, something's trying to kill me. Why would you do that? So, for instance, I have a cat in English can only be said one way, and that is I have a cat. If you said, a cat have I, you've changed the meaning. But, in Esperanto, let's say, um, let's look who I've got in this group. Uh, we've got a mage, we've got a warlock, we've got a rogue, and we've got a druid. Um, and blah, 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 blah. Let's just go with druid, okay? So the word for druid is druido, druido. Nice, nice simple word, okay? And he's going to be the word that we play with the most in this particular lesson. So, to say, I have a druid, we'd say, me havas Druidon. Now, did you notice that before, when I taught you the word for druid, it was druido? But when I taught you it as the object of the sentence, it went from druido to druidon? The reason being is because it is now the object. In Esperanto, that N sound you hear at the end, that N that I attach to the end of the druid, that is called the accusative case. And it is a marker that tells you what is the object of a sentence. So, when I say I have a druid, what do I have? A druid. So the druid is what's being had. It is the object. Cool? We got that? Awesome. So the standard word order in Esperanto is the same as English, funnily enough. So this is where English um, speakers usually get a little bit confused because uh, they get used to the standard word order and then someone else comes along and mixes it up and they're like, no! So I have a druid in Esperanto. Standard in most sentences is me havas druidon, okay? Nice and simple. But if I suddenly then said druidon havas me, or me druidon havas, or me, um, 
let's see, Havas Druidon. Um, that, like, that's the standard one again. There's several different ones you can play it around, you can move it around, but they all have exactly the same meaning in Esperanto. Now, this is where it gets a little bit confusing for some people. Oh, shiver me timbers, something's trying to eat me. Um, they think, oh, okay, well, it's got the same meaning then. That, that's cool, I just use whatever. Yes, it does have the same meaning, but there is something else. There is emphasis, okay? So, for instance, in Esperanto, when you say, Mi havas druidon, that's the standard word order in Esperanto. So everyone's like, cool, he has a druid. But then if you come along and you say, Druidon havas me, everyone's like, okay, so he has a druid. But hang on, he's not using the standard Esperanto word order. Why is he doing that? What is his purpose? And that's where you come into play with emphasis, okay? So when you move or change the word order in Esperanto, unless you continually consistently follow this different word order people are going to think you're trying to emphasize it for a reason now this won't change the meaning of the sentence in any way but they might it probably will change absolutely nothing about the conversation but people will just go okay um for some reason he's emphasizing druid okay well that's cool and there could be several reasons why he's doing that maybe it is actually just his native word order that's what he's used to or it could be the fact that maybe he wants to say druid first just to make sure that I actually hear it. Or maybe it's so important that it must come first above everything else in this world. Like there's several different reasons why you might want to change it around. But yeah, just where the hell is my rogue? Where is my rogue? Where is my rogue? Ah, oh, fudge me timbers. Where is he? Sorry, my rogue just went and got himself attacked. I don't know what he's doing. He's being annoying. Oh, no, don't attack me. Oh, why? I don't want to die. I'm too young and beautiful. Oh, since when did the healer become the tank? Like, seriously. Okay, let's let's just protect my guy. Okay, so, we've learned that one. So now we're going to practice with a little bit of game words. And we're going to play with word orders and all that type of stuff. So, the way to say um, heal, because that's what I'm doing a lot. I'm healing a lot here. You'd say Sanigas, okay? So I heal the druid would be Mi Sanigas la Druidon, okay? That's the standard word order. Um, and you'll notice that I put Druidon again in the accusative case. And the reason for that is because it's the object of the sentence. But how would you say I have, oh, I heal a druid? I completely flip it around, go on. Be, be crazy, live on the edge. Completely flip that word order. Let's go. Druidon Sanigas Mi. Okay? So there you go. You've just changed that word order. Druidon Sanigas Mi. But how would you then say that? Like, say the same thing that I just taught you, the, the same sentence. But this time, put the druid between the verb and the, um, the pronoun. The pronoun is the subject, by the way. Sorry if I just threw in a new word. So that would be. Mi druidon sanigas, okay? So you see, these all mean the same thing, but we're, we're playing with the word order, and you're probably thinking, why are you making my life so difficult? I'm not. You've got to remember that Esperanto is an international language. It's designed for the entire world. And not the entire world, a large portion, but the, not the, entire, the entirety of the entire world, that's a lot of entires, uses the same word order as English. For instance, Japanese does it quite differently. They... Um, they, I believe, put the verbs at the end of the sentence, and you've got other languages where they completely reverse it. Um, you've got German, which I think also puts verbs in a different spot. Ah, I can't remember. But there's a lot of different word orders out there, so Esperanto has to cater for everyone in that sense, okay? And in order to make it easy, that's why the accusative case exists. Now, because we English speakers are so used to our set in ways of using only one particular method, um, we get used to it, and then suddenly someone mixes it up, and we're like, we hate you. But yeah, you'll get used to it over time. It'll probably take you, I don't know, five years. No, joking, it won't take you that long unless you're as bad as me. But it will take you a while to get used to it. So, um, apparently someone's abusing someone else in the group. This is lovely. So, how do you say, standard word order, I heal the druid? Mi sanigas la druidon. Mi sanigas la druidon. And how would you say, um, I heal the druid, but in reverse word order, completely reverse? Let's 
la druidon sanigas me. And how would you say that, but put the object between the subject and the verb, go. Mi druidon sanigas, okay? Now I hope that by doing this, we're getting used to this um, different word orders. So let's try another one. Let's, we're going to use the verb C this time. So the verb for C is vidas, vidas, okay? So, how would you say, I see the druid standard word order? Mi, oh, what is attacking me now? Mi vidas la druidon, mi vidas la druidon. And how would you say it, complete reverse word, word order? La druidon vidas me. La druidon vidas me. And how would you say it, um, but this time put the object between the verb and the uh, subject? Go. Me. La druidon vidas. Me, la druidon vidas. Okay, now there is other uses for the accusative in Esperanto. There's actually many other uses and this will probably drive you insane when you find out about these, but I'm not going to cover them in this video. I just wanted to teach you the main purpose of the accusative case. And the reason the accusative case has many different meanings in Esperanto is just in order to simplify things overall for um, us. And when I say simplify, you're like, no, it doesn't simplify at all. But once you actually learn to use the accusative case correctly, you actually find it's a blessing. Like for instance, there's certain things in English you just can't say in any other way than the standard word order. But in Esperanto, you can mix everything up. Everything can go anywhere, which gives you so much flexibility when it comes to translation, when it comes to poetry, when it comes to just being creative overall. That's the beauty of the accusative case. Now most people will, are like, why would a created language, a language with created origins, use such a complex system? And it's because, yes, it was designed to be an international language, so it caters for everyone, but also it needs to be a language which is flexible enough to be able to be used for anything. And that's the beauty of the accusative. Once you learn to actually take control of it and use it correctly, you'll just see how effective it is. And that's why a lot of new speakers are like, why are the old guard, the old oh crap, oh crap, no, not me, not me, not me, not me, not me, not me, why? <laughs> I almost got pwned. Okay, so that's why the old guard, the older Esperantists are like, they really get hard and they're like, not get hard. Whoa, you guys are dirty minded. That's why they really defend the use of the accusative case. Because they see how useful it is within the language, its many uses. And that's why a lot of new speakers are like, get really annoyed about it because they see how hard it is. But all you have to do is just hang in there long enough, just practice it enough, and eventually you will get it. And once you do get it, you will feel awesome about it because you'll be like, yeah, I just did the most impossible thing ever. But then you'll be like, whoa. And I'll notice this. You have beginning Esperanto speakers who will follow standard word order. Then you have speakers who have learned, just learned to, no, I don't want to do another one, who have just learned to actually fully use the accusative case. And they're the most annoying ones because they put it everywhere. They, they completely mix up sentences just so they can go, mm, look at me, man, I know how to use the accusative. And then you'll get the old guard and they'll only ever use it for emphasis or in poetry or stuff like that, or in translation if need be. But yeah, that's the accusative case. Now I hope I have, I've cleared it up enough for you guys. I've given, stop inviting me to groups, seriously. Okay, I don't want to be invited to your groups. Um, so yeah, I hope I've cleared it up enough for you. If not, um, just leave a comment below. I swear to God, if someone invites me to another group again, I'm going to kill them. Leave a comment below and I'll try and like sort out whatever your issue is. Um, however, uh, if you feel that this lesson was like really crappy and you didn't actually understand anything, also let me know. So yeah, that's it. If you've liked this video, give it a like, share it around with your friends, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Otherwise, guess what I'm going to use the accusative case for on you? <laughs>